Good afternoon. I'm Amy Ryan, Deputy Editor of Metering and Smart Energy International, coming to you from the African Utility Week studio. Today I have with me Jim Rogers, who is the ex-CEO and Chairman of the Board at Duke Energy in America. Welcome, Jim. Amy, I'm delighted to be here with you today. Good. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, Jim, you were a speaker in the keynote session yesterday at African Utility Week. Can you tell me what your primary message to the delegates at the conference was? My primary message was all about what can we do to accelerate access to electricity. There's 630 million people in Sub-Saharan Africa with no access to electricity. So I tried to focus on what could utilities do to firm up the power to the people it's connected to, but also extend the grid. And then I talked about the rural areas of the country where there's been this distributed renewable mm -hmm. business models evolving. So my focus is, was on both, because I think it takes both to solve this critical problem. Okay. Um, you published a book last year uh, titled Lighting the World. What spot, what was your idea behind the book and the, what is the key theme that you are presenting in the book? I've spent the last 25 years as CEO of a power company in the U.S. supplying electricity to millions of people. And as I learn more and more about the fact that there were 1.2 billion people in the world with no access, I found that amazing, stunning, and I recognized that something must get done to solve it. So I wanted to try to understand what the problem was and what could be done to solve it. And that's why I wrote the book. It's to put a spotlight on the problem because it's a problem that a lot of World Bank, even others, have a little bit of a blind spot. People that are trying to solve poverty problem think about medical issues, they think about education, but they don't think about electricity, which is an enabler, one that can help address those important issues. Okay. Um, and just uh, judging from your discussions and conversations that you've had with people over the two days that we've been here, um, where do you see the most need for investment in Africa's energy economy? I would say everywhere. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think there is a need to invest in central station plants, investment in the grid, because grids around the world are moving from kind of a grid 1.0 to grid 2.0, mm -hmm. and I think that heavy investments are needed for that. Also, I think there needs to be significant investments in distributed energy uh, enterprises to really accelerate access to electricity to the remote areas of the 52 countries in Sub-Saharan Africa. Okay. Now, um, according to a recent GSMA Association report, um, they indicate that mobile networks are the predominant infrastructure in, the, in emerging in the emerging market, um, and mobile networks are now outweighing electricity access and Africa is an example of that. How do you think we can uh, leverage mobile networks to increase energy services in, in Africa? As I've studied the different business models that are evolving, particularly in rural Africa, what I'm finding is one of the keys to providing energy services, providing electricity, is having a mobile phone. Yeah. Uh, I know about Mkopa Solar in Kenya, yeah. where mobile phone plays a key role in how they provide electricity. Uh, same is true with off-grid electric in Tanzania. So I think the mobile phone is really one of the keys to the pay-as-you-go models yes. that are being developed in Kenya and Tanzania and some in Rwanda are being developed there so they ultimately can be deployed in other areas. Okay. Um, and then, um, can you tell me more about your work with the um, uh, Global Bright Light Foundation um, and what impact that has in Africa, or what the impact that has in, had in Africa? 
I was a co-founder uh, and chairman of Global Bright Light. And the inception really came in 2011. I had been in Kenya in the summer, and I was visiting different villages. And I was struck by the fact when I met a young man, he had a cell phone, there was no electricity in his village. And I said, well, how do you charge it? He says, I walk three hours, I pay somebody to let me charge it, then I walk wow. back to my village. That's when I said, this can be fixed. Mm -hmm. And I looked around the world for technologies and discovered that solar lanterns with the ability to charge cell phones and provide light was a perfect answer, a perfect start, mm -hmm. and a better use of time and cheaper yes. in the long view. When you count the time spent, they could be spent doing other things. Mm -hmm. So that was the motivation. We provided solar lanterns and Rwanda and refugee camps there in Kenya and Uganda, along with Solar Sister, who operates there. Yes. And we currently are doing it primarily in Central America as well as in South America. Okay. Um, and can you tell me more about current projects or planned projects that you have um, with the foundation? I think the, it's solely focused today yeah. on solar lanterns. On solar, okay. But I see these new business models emerging where they're doing small home solar, mm -hmm. where they're doing microgrids. Pyrohive in Kenya is an example of a company that's building out uh, microgrids. So I think there's, I kind of think of it as a solar ladder. Solar lanterns, the first rung, small home solar, larger home solar, then microgrids. So I see that as a natural transition to some villages that are far from the grid. And actually, I was, as I did research, discovered it's cheaper to climb up the solar ladder than for the grid to be extended and yeah. paid. Yeah. So that's kind of the advantage of solar prices falling dramatically. Okay. So we're seeing a major transition with uh, uh, ICT networks in energy. Um, what would your advice be to CEOs um, in Africa um, with, with, uh, in light of the influence um, of ICT in energy today? And how do, how do, how do they manage that change, that change management um, from, from one model to the next? Well, I think they play an important role, but, you know, CEOs, CEO to me stands for Chief Educational Officer. I think it's important to learn. I think it's important to educate. I think it's important to incorporate new technologies into the business model. Okay, and how do they manage that whole process? I, I think that it's a day-to-day. -day. It takes a certain amount of hands-on, yeah. and it's a really complicated transition. Okay. And then lastly, Jim, uh, from a global perspective, um, uh, countries and governments and utilities from around the world are facing uh, a double-edged sword in that they have the responsibility to have enough to supply enough power to their people but at the same time they have the environmental responsibility with keeping down carbon emissions. What would you advise be to utilities in that regard and what has been Duke's experience in managing that? When I look back to the 20th century the available technologies we had were coal, natural gas, nuclear. They were the cheapest, yes. most available, and we were on a mission to provide universal access to our people in America. Now that we're moving into the 21st century, there's new technologies that are available. And these technologies are solar and wind. My belief is, is that there's going to be a transition. We're not going to go totally away from nuclear and coal and gas. Okay. They will continue to play a role for some time. But increasingly, there'll be more and more renewables as the price of wind and solar fall. So a little bit of it is affordability. I like to say that providing electricity requires you to the mission is defined as affordable, reliable, 
clean and safe. You can't always, you, can, you always can do safe, but sometimes there's a balancing act between the other two. Historically, affordability has trumped, but increasingly in the future, being clean is going to be the more important yeah. criteria. Okay. Thank you, uh, Jim. Thank you so much for um, speaking, us, speaking with us today. Um, that's all we have time for today. Um, I'm Amy Ryan. Um, Deputy Editor of Metering and Smart Energy International coming to you from the African Utility Week Studio. Thank you.